That is the best duck for flat ground I've ever seen. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, well, she's a bit of a mess right now, but we're tearing this thing apart because we need to get in, figure out where the leaks were coming from. And uh, we're gonna go into the carbs, check out the, the jetting in the carbs and try to figure out why this thing has that bog. It's got a bog right off the start. Very interesting sled, really dirty. Um, but let's get on to it. Jesus, oh, God. That's a heavy motor. Pop those reeds out, make sure that everything looks good in there. You know, while we're here, right? The motor's out, easy peasy to get into. Man, get in there and take a good look at them because they can be problematic. Melt down a piston. Lots of damage, cylinder damage, that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to find something to poke those off with. Now these boots, they'll start to crack, but like, you know, you can't, you can't use a clamp like that to clamp your carbs back on or your, or your uh, throttle bodies. These are beat, beat down. It's a good looking read. Good looking. Uh, what we're doing is making a list of all the parts and pieces I'm gonna need to tune this up. I pulled these reeds off, so obviously I'm gonna need new gaskets for it. Um, but that's not gonna keep us from doing what we need to do. Now this has an oil delete on it. Most race slides do. No oil injection pump on it, makes sense. But we're getting some leaks. I don't know, it's just leaking out the bottom somewhere at the belly pan. So I put this tube or this hose in last year and you know, it's pretty close to this exhaust manifold. So uh, I usually have a piece of reflective material across there to take care of that business. Well, let's do this. See these right here? Oh, there you go, leaking all over. These things are annoying as hell. That's what leaks. This rubber rots out and then it falls out the bottom. The coolant just pours out all over the place. That temperature probe. Yeah, see, what'll happen is these get clamped down so hard, everybody thinks tighter is better, and then it pinches the rubber, and then that's the end of that. You can see, you can see that the rubber's already cracked right there. Look at that, there's a leak right there. So that's one of our leaks. That could be the one, right? That could be the one. Bugger. So what I'm thinking is I got to find a piece of tube. I'm going to slip it on there, put a bolt in it and uh, uh, clamp it together. Cause this is just plastic. There's no fiber reinforcement in it. And these are just junk. And I bet you, I bet you that $1 piece right there has been very uh, profitable for Articat and their motors. I bet you. So look at this here too. I'm just looking at this. That's the uh, temp sensor. That's broken. I'm gonna order one of those. Gooey. You go there. Yeah. So that's a new pit. That's a new jug there, right? Yeah. I can tell. Look different from the inside. And this is not. Clamping is been over tightened. So we'll just take that off. Or was it over tightened? No, it just didn't fit. So this clamp, I don't think ever fit right on there. We over tightened it and see that. So at least we found one or two potential issues. Not Temperature probe is toast. That's no good. There we go. That's good. That's a good start. I like it. The rest is probably good and tight. So I need clamps. These aren't the best clamps to get just because of that exact thing of what you're seeing. Now they're cheap and they're quick. They're easy to find. 
Uh, if you're going to get them, you got to get them in stainless. But if you can find one, oh, actually this kind of clamp right here, you know, that it doesn't have any little protrusions through them. And it's got this nice little surface in here that sort of goes around the clamp or around the, the uh, rubber hose and doesn't destroy it. That's the thing you want to do, or that's what you want to have. So, that's looking good. Well, not really, but not too bad. A lot of times I go back in my videos, I'm like, oh, oh, what kind of connection was that? And that's the one right there. Would you look at this place? <laughs> Bam, it's just like the day before we go riding. Just add that to the engines that have been pulled. So I've got this one, I've got the 800 Rotax, I've got another Articat motor right there. Good times. But you know what we do have, and I'm pretty excited about this, because it's awesome, is this. I've got a Trail Tanks extended range tank. It's made by Trail Tanks. And they make it just for this reason. It extends your range. Uh, they make these for all kinds of different models. Are right, we gonna have to come up through the bottom? No, that one's broken. This one's still good. But we're not gonna hook any of that up yet until we're done in here, right? What they did was this sled uh, has got the rear cooler on it. Let me see. Yeah, it's got the rear tunnel cooler off of what, an F7 or some darn thing? F7. And I think it even has, uh, yeah, it's got the, the running board coolers as well. So all that's been added extra and there's extra piping all over the place. So we're gonna have to wait until we get the engine back in, everything plumbed. Then we'll put that trail tanks tank in there. I think that's 10 and a half gallons. Something like that, eight and a half, 10 and a half gallons. Um, but that's good. And then this, is gonna go in here. That's gonna go on our 925 Alan. And that 925 is gonna suck the gas back pretty fast. So I've got an extra little carrier that I'm gonna use for that. Look at all the gas on there. This one doesn't have any. This one has some. So it's probably leaking out the side of this bowl. And it would empty a tank. Remember, it would pretty much empty the tank, right? So we're gonna have to clean these all up. These are kind of like little, uh, I don't know, little catch area for contaminants and water and stuff like that. Some carbs have big long tubes. Some carbs don't have any. It's just carb cleaner, let's do one of these. Do a preliminary cleaning. I'm gonna have to soak these. These are all just not good. These are a mess, man. You look forward. Yeah, they do get them cleaned up, then uh, when you try to open it up, you're not gonna get too much stuff, too much contaminants in the little bitty workings of it. That's full of rust and garbage, just from you know, water in the gas, ethanol. Somebody's been running that in here. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Look how that gasket was pinched there. That's why that was leaking. That's a good thing too. We found it. That's good, so I'm happy. I'm happy that we found the problem. It was just leaking, and there was lots of little backfires and popping of that motor, so it was just a matter of time before something went. Check out this. Look at the dirt inside that. So all that stuff, you know, can you see that? So what happens is, you fire your sled up, one of those gets choked into your, uh, one of your jets and it leans it out, then you run into your issues, right? So it has 460 mains in it and 
Anybody sees what size that is? Can you see what that is? Can you see what that is? So those bowls are dirty. I'm not going to clean them right now because I'm going to do that when when I get all the other parts in because I'm replacing all these jets. And I'm going to check out, make sure that the right ones too. Don't put them in with an impact. I just happen to have a quarter on that one. So I'm removing them. This is brilliant. I'm not quite sure why this ever happened. But look at, check out the choke plungers, right? So they're actually inside the cab. You got to pop the cab. You got to pull these little choke plungers. One, one, two, I think one yeah. Is broken. <laughs> yeah, one and one's broken. One you can't get to. Like there's like it's pretty much impossible for you to get out onto it. So we're gonna replace those with cables. So I'm gonna pop those out right now, and that way I'm gonna be able to see what kind of uh, choke cable we can put on that. I'm pretty sure I know what we're gonna need. So this one actually is all exploded. This one is still together. Oh yeah, because the knob was broken. So that's what that looks like. I just want to make sure that when I ordered, I get the right cables. Damn. All right, I'm not going to clean any of that. I'm just going to throw a rag over it, and then I'm going to soak these and blow them out. Yeah, I don't even know. So what was this? What were these turned at? So 50. This is, these were three quarters. So these air screws. Are they air screws or fuel screws? They're, I think they're fuel if they're on the they fuel if they're on the engine side, and if they're on the airbox side, they're air? I think so. Something like that. Oh yeah, these are, it's dirty, dirty. And look at also here, 50, one, 50, sort of 150, so a, a turn and a half. I'm getting these out though. You know what, I'm pretty sure that if we just tidy this carb up, buy the proper jets, um, it's going to be a lot better. It's going to run good. Oh, I get, I see. So the, well, that's different. What? Check that out. <laughs> They're two different fuel or fuel or those would be fuel screws probably. They're two. You see that? One's broken, the tip's broken off it, or it's ground down. What's going on? You see that? Did you see that, Simon? Yep. Good thing we looked at that. So I don't know if that piece is in there. Forgot to grab my pilot jets out of here. A lot of time a pilot jet will cause a, an issue. So with carbs, you know, get it out of here first. Yeah, that's a 40. It's a 40 pilot jet. The, so you can look up this, the Mikuni Super VM carburetor manual online. I'll try to, if I remember, I'll try to put a link in the description. It tells you exactly how one of these carburetors work. Uh, when you're starting your sled, it's the pilot system, that uh, the pilot jet system that provides the fuel and the mixture uh, of air to start the sled. If your pilot jet, which is you know, these little tiny ones right there, if that one is plugged, if it's a single uh, carb sled, it's probably not going to start unless you add fuel to it. Um, if it's dual carbed, it may start, but one's going to be running really lean. And you might run into an issue, it's going to run poorly. Um, and as you increase throttle, different things come into play. Your needle starts to open up and allows more fuel in through the main jet. Uh, this has... Um, these other types of jets here, I believe they're just called a fuel jet. They're not a main jet. I think they're a fuel jet. Anyway, um, so that comes into play. And your, as the, um, as a little guillotine goes up, or your throttle valve, or your throttle piston, whichever one type of, you know, this, these are flat slide carbs, uh, round slider, you know, those, they've got the piston that goes up and down. They all sort of come into play. But if one of those jets, isn't right if it's plugged with that dirt that we see in this bowl here one cylinder is going to run lean so you're going to find it out when you're on the lake and you open that thing up wide open and you're 
trying to race your buddies and just uh, that one cylinder is run a little lean and then you're in for the nightmare. That's usually when you find out. Sometimes you can get away with it running a little lean if you're just sort of poking around, ditch banging on and off the throttle all the time. You're not really noticing uh, what's going on inside your system. One of them is plugged. Something's just not quite right. That's usually what it is. You know, you can clean all these jets. I just replace them. Carbon, or not carbon, but varnish starts to build on them because of the poor quality fuel we get. That varnish starts to build and it slowly chokes out the orifice. You, you might not be able to see it. You probably can't see it, but that's when you're going to run into your problem. You don't clean them out with welder, nozzle cleaning tools and all that. That's not done. Um, but that's just a little bit of an example of you know, what can go on inside your system. That's definitely bad. Look at that dirt. Oh, that was going to cause a problem, boys. I'm telling you right now. Okay, so I got to go order a whole bunch more stuff. I don't want to get this back together because it is a pretty fun little sled. I think we're good for everything else. I'm going to need an assortment of clamps. Then we're going to rip these skis off and uh, put some uh, uh, curved skis on because these aren't good for playing. And what else? We need to figure out the steering. What are you guys doing to make better steering options on this machine? Just a reminder that if you like my videos, please subscribe. Uh, check out our website, www.powermods.com. It's going to be up shortly if it's not already up right now. And make sure you give me a big old thumbs up if you want us to keep making these videos. Sometimes they're a little boring. Haven't accomplished a whole lot here today, but at least we got to poke around. And uh, you guys have been, show me the Articat. You know, so that's it. That's the Articat. 600. This used to be a 440, but now it's got that 600 uh, Snow Pro motor in it. And we're gonna be getting her all fixed up. Oh, oh, you know what I forgot? The fuel pump. Fuel pump looks pretty good. I don't know if we should tear that apart or not. Maybe not right now. Eh, we'll leave it. Do you remember where that fuel pump was in there? Was it accessible or was it buried? Uh, I think it was, I think it's, it was like up here somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just leave that fuel pump for now. Not going to be a, a big issue. But that's it. That's it for today. We're going to do uh, some other stuff, so make sure you keep on coming back.